The Carica Straits project is a research partnership between the British Livers and Cattle Society, Scotland's mm. Rural College and Angler Beef Processors or ABP Abattoir. The aim of the project is to establish genomic estimated breeding values for carcass traits using measurements from visual image analysis or VIA as we better know it. The main benefits of genomic breeding values are that they will firstly allow us uh, to make faster rates of genetic gain uh, because they identify the breeding merit of animals at a much earlier stage in their lives and often at much greater levels of accuracy. The second benefit is that it allows us to measure traits that uh, we don't currently measure, in, in this instance uh, carcass traits um, coming from the abattoir that will relate to uh, the main muscle, the main carcass cuts uh, and, and muscle groups. The third benefit is that it will provide a platform that we can uh, develop future traits uh, and future EBVs. Um, the technique is particularly valuable for traits associated with herd health and fertility and these are notoriously difficult to manage on farm. The success of the project will rely on continued data collection from the abattoir as well as collection of DNA samples from individual animals. This will be done through nasal swabbing and we'll be demonstrating the, the use of these today. You may have been asked, or you may be asked in the future, to uh, nasal swab some of your animals for the project. The reason for this is that they are linked or, or related to animals that we have VIA measurements for and are representative of the, the limousine breed as a whole. If you are willing to participate and do some swabbing, it is important to us that you swab the animals that have been pre-selected for this purpose. When nasal swabbing, make sure you have the animals that have been pre-selected for sampling. Before taking the sample, as a double check, cross-reference the ear tag against the list of requested animals. If the nostril is dirty, wipe it with a clean cloth. The packaging has an open hair sticker indicating the end to open. Peel back the packaging and remove the nasal swab, making sure that the swab doesn't contact any surfaces. The nasal swab consists of a collection tube at the bottom and a collection sponge attached to the cap. Holding the collection tube, rub the sponge around the inside of the animal's nostril for a good five seconds. This doesn't harm the animal, but may be a slight annoyance to them. If moderate restraint is required, then a halter could be used. After swabbing, hold the tube upright and unscrew the cap. There is liquid inside the tube, so be careful it doesn't spill. Turn the cap upside down and insert the sponge into the tube and screw the cap on tightly. Shake the tube for five seconds to thoroughly mix the sample. Label the swab by clearly writing the animal's UK number on the white space available on the side of the collection tube. Place the collection tube in the return envelope to the British Limousin Cattle Society and post. OK, so by now you will have taken your nasal swabs on farm and you'll have stuck them in an envelope like that and dispatched them off to the Breed Society. Uh, the Breed Society would then have sent them on to the laboratory um, where the lab would have taken the swab out of the envelope, processed it through its normal processes um, and extracted DNA. The DNA is then put through a machine that determines the, um, the genotype of that particular DNA uh, sample uh, and produces the, the DNA signature for that animal. So all of the samples would have been um, sent into the lab and then the data, the DNA signatures will come down here. Um, we'll have put them all together in one big file um, where we'll be associating them with information uh, obtained from the abattoir on the VIA traits uh, such as retail yield, uh, eye muscle area, loin length and so on. That produces what we call the reference population um, and the reference population are the animals that have got good information and genotypes um, and they produce the SNP key. And uh, basically what happens is we take the DNA signatures of all the animals that have got poor phenotypes, average phenotypes and good phenotypes. We associate that with their um, phenotypes and produce an equation 
that tells us um, how good a particular DNA signature is likely to be uh, when we predict a phenotype from it. And so that then means in the future you can send us uh, a sample from an animal that doesn't have a phenotype, we can compare it to the reference population, i.e. the SNP key, and we can produce a genomic breeding value for that animal. Um, and obviously the advantages of that is that we can do that on an animal that's a day old. As soon as an animal's born, you can take a nasal swab, send it off, and we could tell you uh, the genomic breeding value for that animal to enable you to make decisions based upon it early in its life, rather than waiting later for it to produce a, a conventional EBV. Now, when you get your results back from the lab, um, they appear on the BASCO website as normal. You type in the uh, identity of the animal here that you're looking for, and up come the results, and they look very much like a conventional EBV. Um, and in fact, that's, uh, that's their benefit. They look very much like a conventional EBV, uh, and they're used in exactly the same way. So farmers can use genomic breeding values just like they use conventional EBVs to make their breeding decisions. The advantage is they can just do it earlier in the animal's life. Now, other traits that benefit from genomic breeding values are those that where the phenotype is difficult to measure. And very good examples of that are things like disease resistance, maternal traits, and feed efficiency traits. And what this essentially means in the future is that most farmers, even though they don't performance record, could get genomic breeding values for traits that have been conventionally difficult to improve. Um, as I say, the, a very good example of that is feed efficiency, where it's very expensive to record the information, uh, but would yield great benefits to the industry if we could breed animals that produce food with lower feed intake. Um, and so this is a great prize for genomic breeding values.